have normal thyroid lab values, but you still don't feel well, let me tell you why your normal thyroid labs don't matter. I'm Cassie Smith, modern endocrine. I'm a board certified endocrinologist. I help people with thyroid problems and hormone problems feel better. If you are a patient who's struggling with thyroid issues and you don't feel well, and you have all of the symptoms of hypothyroidism, but normal lab values, let me explain to you why you might not be being treated appropriately and why that makes sense. When we look at thyroid lab values, the normal is a huge spectrum. So when we talk about normal, we're talking about 95% of the population. Okay? But just because 95% of the population is normal doesn't mean when your value falls in that range, you feel normal, right? So when somebody comes to me with thyroid lab values and they're in the normal range, but they have dry skin and they have constipation and they're fatigued, they're gaining weight, they're cold, their hair is falling out, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are properly treated. Okay, so your normal thyroid lab values, just because they're normal, doesn't mean that's normal for you. So it's really important that you find a provider or somebody who understands this who can do more testing. When I look at thyroid lab values, not only do you need to know what your TSH is, your T3, you wanna know a free T3, a free T4. I wanna know what a TPO antibody, if you have a TPO antibody, how high is it? That tells us how inflamed you are. The higher it is and the more inflamed, the less likely you are actually able to utilize the thyroid hormone that you have. I also wanna know what is your iodine and your reverse T3. Because if your reverse T3 is really high, then that tells me that you are chronically inflamed. And it also tells me that all the thyroid hormone that you are making that is supposed to be active is actually being wasted. When we make thyroid hormone from our thyroid gland, we make something called free T4. Our body has to take that free T4 and convert it into something called free T3. Free T3 is your active thyroid hormone. That is the thyroid hormone that actually gets into the cell and makes it work. So it makes your symptoms go away. So what we really want is free T3. So if somebody is not able to take that T4, the free T4 that our thyroid makes, or the T4 that your physician is giving you, if your body can't take that and convert it into free T3, then you're not gonna feel well. Because guess what? The free T3 is what at the cellular level is taken into the cell and makes the cell work. So it makes sense that if your free T3 is low, you're gonna have symptoms, right? The other issue is that a ton of people in this country, even though maybe their free T3 levels are okay, they are unable to take that free T3 and move it from their blood into their actual cell. So when I look at your free T3 level, I'm getting a blood level, but that doesn't tell me what's actually coming into the cell and causing your cell to function. So there is currently no way to measure intracellular T3 levels, unfortunately. If somebody out there is working on how to do that, you're a genius and one day you will have a lot of money. What we need to know is what is the intracellular free T3 level. So in a lot of Americans, many Americans, even though their free T3 level is normal, what's actually coming into the cell is not the amount that's in the blood. So you have a lower intracellular level of T3 in your actual cell than you do in the blood. The number one reason is inflammation. So why are people inflamed? And what does that matter? Like why, why does inflammation matter? So 93% of us have high fasting insulin levels, meaning our insulin is above five. If that is the case, you develop inflammation. When you develop inflammation from insulin or from toxins that we ingest via food or additives or dyes or the things that we breathe, or if you're inflamed because of food that you eat, sugar, processed food, some people do not tolerate dairy and gluten as well. All these things can cause inflammation, including lack of sleep and other chronic disease processes. When our T3 is trying to come from our blood and into a cell through something called a lipid bilayer cell membrane, it's not able to do that as easily. When you have a lot of inflammation, the T3 cannot come from the outside in the blood through the cell membrane via a lipid bilayer receptor site. So it has to come through this receptor. It's kind of like opening a door. Well, when you're inflamed, it's like the door is locked and the lock is jammed. So even if it puts the key in, the T3 says, I'm here and I'm ready to come in, the door won't open because it's jammed from all the inflammation. So a lot of people walking around with this chronic inflammation, even though their free T3 levels may be normal in their blood, that free T3 is not able to get through that door into the actual cell, which then takes away the symptoms. So this is why your free T3 and your free T4 and your TSH levels might not matter. 
it doesn't even matter if they're normal. If you have symptoms of hypothyroidism, then we need to figure out how to address those. How do we get the free T3 into the cell to get rid of your symptoms? We do it by lowering inflammation and making sure your free T3 levels are high enough. So I've given you some examples as to how you can do that. Lowering your insulin level, changing your diet, decreasing stress, sleeping more. But if you like this information and you're intrigued and you wanna learn more, then make sure you're following me and I'm gonna keep teaching you this. I've also got a podcast coming soon and we're gonna have a whole episode on thyroid and how to lower inflammation.